Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Come into God's presence. Come, saints and sinners alike. Faith has brought us on here. Amen. Good all the time, amen. God is good. God is good all the time, amen. Amen. Come into God's presence, into God's love, God's everlasting grace and love. You are welcome here. Whether you are saint or a sinner alike, but God invites you all, no matter who you are. Today is the um Graduation Sunday and Young Adult Sunday, we try to bring young adults and children and youth and emerging adults into our studies and teaching them to love God and to love Mighty God, we offer ourselves to you in this time of worship. Accept us just as you, we are, as you accept the tax collector Matthew, as you accept the hemorrhaging woman who suffering for 12 years. You just accept and invite us into your loving arms. Mighty God, we offer special prayer for those who are dear and near to us, for those who receive the hospital treatment and surgery, especially Sister Vivian Sidewicks and Evelyn Vickers and Bob and Mickey. There are so many others who are suffering. Please bring your healing mercy upon them. Make them whole again. Mighty God, we offer special prayers for those who lost their loved ones, Sister Patricia Isaacs, for those who are grieving still. Please give them your comforting presence. Mighty God, we offer special prayers also for our annual conference. We had a wonderful holy conference. We experienced the Holy Spirit. Please be with our leaders, Bishop Latra Easterling, our DS, Dr. Kogman, and all the clothes and laity. Also, mighty God, we pray for those who seek shelters in this time of ages. So many things tempt us to take away our lives and destroy us. Please cover them with your mighty arms, with your blood, so that they can rise up and they can continue to bless you and praise you all the days of their lives. But God, we thank you that you bring us together no matter where we are in our life situation. We are here to worship you, to glorify you. So accept our praises, accept our prayers, accept our fellowship together. 
and we thank you that you listen to our prayers and please bless our youth and children and young adults. Please let them grow with your wisdom and knowledge wherever they are. For those who are graduate this year, please bless them, their futures, and also when they come meet up and downs in their lives, but you will cover them with your mighty arms. And we thank you now these times of our prayers that your son Jesus Christ taught us with our native tongues. Our Father, now, if you are able, please join me with the Canadian Initiative Prayer. Embolden us to be vulnerable and authentic seekers of your wisdom and your will. We claim this as a sacred and brave space for learning, for questioning, for building, and for growth. Ask your blessing on all we think, do, and become. Teach us to dare, teach us to remember, teach us to love, so that when we stumble or doubt, we choose wisely, opt for enthusiasm, and embrace the promise you have placed in our heart. Make us catalysts of hope and driving in the church and the world. Amen. Now, if you are able, please arise and join me in Days of Eliza.
did it. Well, scripture reading this morning uh, is Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother, brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land of the place at Shechem to the Oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, your offspring, I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. From there, he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages towards the Negev. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. People who are joining the worship via Zoom and Facebook, they can hear me. Okay, so probably you may sit over there. I'm going to tell you a story. Okay, you can sit there. Okay. Well, uh, there's a story in the Bible when Jesus walked the village and there is a person name is Matthew. Matthew is my husband's name, but the Matthew is kind of a IRS agent who collect the taxes. So he sat at the tax booth and collecting taxes. And Jesus across the street and saw Matthew and asked him, Matthew, follow me. Then what he did, he followed Jesus right away. Do you know why? Jesus didn't say anything, but just told him that, follow me. Can you do that? If some strange person came, you know, come to you and follow me, can you follow them? No. no. <laughs> right, maybe your parents, your teachers don't say, don't follow them, any, any strangers, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the you know, correct situation. But in Jesus' time, when Jesus walked on the street, he performed the miracles and he heard some news and miracles and rumors. Jesus healed the sick and cast out demons. So Jesus asking Matthew, follow me. And he left everything behind him. He followed Jesus right away. And then the Pharisees and scribes were upset because Jesus called this tax collector in Asian time, they don't like the tax collector. Do you know why? Why they don't like the tax collector?
Do you like an IRS agent who collect your tax? No. <laughs> if you like the IRS agent, raise your hands. <laughs> we have a, uh, Brother Joe's and Brother Dennis raise their hands. <laughs> you are good taxpayers. <laughs> but uh, in Jesus' time, tax collectors kind of uh, people dislike them because they thought that they are cheating them. So that's why they don't like the tax collectors. But Jesus did not judge them. Jesus inviting them to follow me. And then the Pharisees and scribes, you know, was upset because why your teachers eating with the uh, sinners and tax collectors? They're not good people. Why you and your teacher hang around these sinners? They were upset. And what Jesus said to them? Jesus said, well, when you go to the hospital, there's lots of patients, right? If you are well, you don't need a physician, you don't need a doctor, right? But if you are sick, you need a doctor. And Jesus said, when you are sick, you need a doctor, but when you are well, you don't need a doctor. So Jesus told them. So I'm going to ask you why Jesus said that. Why Jesus said, you don't need a doctor if you are well, but you need a doctor because you are sick. Do you know why Jesus said that? But you are well, you don't have to go to the hospital, right? Yes. But if you are sick, you need a doctor. Well, we are all sinners. We are not perfect. And then that's why Jesus called the tax collector, no matter what he did. And that's why Matthew, the tax collector, follow him. So I'm going to ask uh, uh, Jose some questions. Well, how do you bring your friends to come to the church to, to come close with God? Uh... I feel like uh, one of the ways uh, I told one uh, like a bunch of my friends to like you know try to come to church and like with me, I just was telling them that you know it's a good thing to get closer to God because like you know uh, when you're struggling in life you know you you might be blinded because you don't know you don't know what to do you know you could be struggling whatever, but you know at least you'd have like something or someone to like talk with you know talk to God you know get closer. Uh, you know, worship and all that, you know? Great, great answer to give you that. Good job. So, Jose, would you like to uh, invite your friend to follow Jesus? Yeah, of course. How many friends do you have? Uh, like in total, all of them? I'd say about 18, 20. 18, 20. So, would you invite them next Sunday? Yeah, I can try. I'll try. Definitely. Try. Yeah, 100%. Definitely. I'll definitely. Whatever, Jose, would you give big hands? So Jose lives uh, near the uh, church at the apartment building, and he has uh, lots of lots of friends. So please pray for him, encourage him when you see him, and also please pray for his future. That's the church do, right? Okay. Well, Adam, how do you invite your friend? I'll just tell them to come. You just tell them to come. Okay, good, good. Yes. Um, <laughs> so good to see you. So Mali, how do you tell your friends to follow Jesus? Um, I just tell them to listen to Jesus because um, they be doing bad stuff and I tell them to stop doing it and I tell them to just think what Jesus will be saying and basically Amen, amen. <laughs> well, Melanie, I know you're a good student and you got an OA. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> How do you tell your friends to follow Jesus? You can use the microphone. By inviting them to like church events and praying for them. By inviting them like a church event and praying for them. Good. Would you give big hands? <laughs> Do, how do you invite your friends to follow Jesus? I tell them to pray to God. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> you told them pray to God. Okay, good. All are good. Thank you so much to come over here. So invite them to have fun with Jesus, to have fun with God. Let them have a dance, no matter who, you know, who they are, no matter what they have done. You know, Jesus invite them all and forgive them. So let them have fun with Jesus so that they can uh, come and add their numbers. Hopefully you guys have fun with Jesus at the church. Would you, would you promise me that at least you will invite your friends next Sunday? Yes? Okay, good. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for your inv invitations to follow you. Make our youth and children to have fun it with you, to follow Jesus. No matter what life happens, mighty God, please let them know that you love them, you care for them, so that they can come to you to praise you, to worship you all the days of their life. So when they have ups and downs in their daily lives, they can stick to Jesus to overcome all the situation. In Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen. Would you give big hands our children and news? Thank you. I trust you that you will invite your friends on Sunday. Okay, good. You, you may go. Can we sing the, the days of Elijah uh, while the Joanna is uh, ready for the scripture readings? Just one verse. Okay. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, Please remain standing for the scripture reading. I'll be reading um, the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, 
It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go on and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to all, call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him and said, my daughter had just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. Jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples. Just then a woman who had been subjected to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, your faith has healed you and the woman has healed at that moment. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the girl by the hand and she got up. News of this spread through all the region. Thank you, this is the word of the Lord. The wonders of
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rodrigo. It was awesome. Thank you for your, your gifts, your commitment to Christ. Let us pray. Mighty God, we are here to follow you. We are here to listen your voice, speak to each of us, open our heart, mind, and souls by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mold us, melt us, and renew us so that we can be recreated by your holy power so that we can truly become disciples of Jesus Christ. That the people of God says, Amen. Amen. I heard a story about the pilot who was flying his private jet on a cloud day. He was not very experienced in instrumental landing. When the control tower was to bring him in, he began to get panicky. Then a voice came over the radio. You just obey instructions, and we will take care of the obstructions. The pilot hit the unknown, but the, he followed the instructions for the safe landing. He did not know who did the instruction, but he trusted that unknown and followed it. This is an example of trusting the instruction and following. In the gospel lesson today, Jesus called Matthew sitting at the text booth, and he said, follow me. And Matthew got up and followed Jesus. So I wondered what attracted him to follow Jesus. Leaving behind everything. So I'm going to ask you, can anyone tell me why Matthew followed Jesus immediately? Left everything that he had. Anybody? Obedience? Good. Anybody else? Faith, yes, good, Brother George. Anybody else? Why make to follow the Jesus immediately that he left everything? Love? Who said that love? Good, thank you, Sister Linda. Obedience and faith and love and anything else? Trust. Who said that? Okay. Well, thank you so much for answering that. It is very interesting that the, the passage does not explain why he followed Jesus, but it says he got up and followed Jesus. Matthew was an outsider who was hated by his people for working with Roman oppression, uh, collecting taxes, so they didn't like him. What made him follow Jesus? You said love and trust and faith, obedience. But Matthew might have made himself rich to collecting taxes and cheating on people. But nothing mattered to him at this point because he was marginalized in his society and the people judging him, but Jesus did not judge him, except that Jesus invited him to come to him, to follow him. So let me ask you another question. There are differences of believing and versus following. So what are the differences between believing and versus following? Action. Who said that? Who said the actions? 
Oh, Jackie, Jackie, thank you so much, Jackie. You said actions. Yes, yes. There's a difference is believing and following. Believing is an attitude and conviction. Yes, I believe you can say with your mouth, and or you can truly believe in your heart. But if you don't have action, there is no following. You're not truly believing. Following contains obedience and actions. So our faith journey quickly fades away when we don't practice Jesus' teaching and obedience. So Matthew practiced obedience to Jesus' instruction. So following has implication for what it means to be a good disciple. The word following means in Greek is oklotiwo, which means to become disciples. The following requires learning. Without learning, we may not be good disciples. Without learning, we may not be a good student. It involves obedience to directions. So when Jesus ate with the sinners and tax collectors and the Pharisees criticized Jesus, saying that, why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus responded to them, those who are well have no need of predictions, but those who are sick go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So what does this mean to you? Being in good disciples mean being in good listener. Matthew was a good listener. For Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are now. For Jesus, it doesn't matter who Matthew was, but it matters who you become. It matters who Matthew would become. Becoming only possible when we obey and follow the instructions. The synagogue leader kneeled before Jesus because his daughter is dying. So he kneeled down before Jesus. It shows his humble actions and surrendering everything to Jesus in order to follow Jesus. This made possible the healing of his daughter because his daughter dead but he knew that Jesus could heal her. When we're thinking that we are righteous like a Pharisee, that we don't need to worship, we just believe Jesus as our Savior, that's it. So they don't come to the worship and they don't come to the Bible study. But this is not a good discipleship example. According to the Bible, God hates pride who thinking that they don't need to learn. But listen, for those who think themselves need God's mercy, they are blessed. In Matthew chapter verse 5, verse 2, it is written, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs in the kingdom of heaven. Those who are poor in spirit means they humble themselves and thinking that they need God every moment of their lives. They need God's mercy. That is the good listener, good follower, good disciples. When we're thinking that the hammering woman acknowledged that she needs God's mercy, she had been suffering for 12 years, she might try everything to cure her disease, but she was not able to be healed. There was, there was no one she could lean on except Jesus. So she was determined to break her boundaries in order to be healed. According to the Jewish law and custom and traditions, she was prohibited from touching Jesus because Jesus was Jew. But she believed this saying, if I only touch his garment, I will be made well. So she was determined to touch Jesus' 
clock. The word church in Greek is hapo, which means cling to, to fasten to. She clung to Jesus no matter what obstacles interfered. She not only believed that Jesus would heal her, but also she was willing to take risks. Her determination made her actions to touch Jesus. So she clung to Jesus in all circumstances in the midst of the obstacles. So that at that moment, Jesus acknowledged her faith. Take heart, daughter. Your faith made you well. Instantly, the woman was made well. We learn in the action of the hemorrhage woman, she was not only just believing, if she just believing, sit it there, there is nothing happened. But she followed Jesus by touching Jesus' clock. Her action was not passive, but proactive. She overcome all obstacles through her proactive faith. Not only do that, she was waiting for her, and she was willing to risk public shame. No matter what people said to me, I don't care. I need healing. So this bleeding woman determined that she needed to take the risk. And what is the worst that can happen? She said, I don't care. I need healing right moment, right now. No one can heal me but except Jesus. Matt, the tax collector, took the risk of leaving everything behind and followed Jesus. It reminds me of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. For those who want to, to save his life will lose it. But those who ever loses his life for my sake will find it. William Barclay said he lost a comfortable job, but he found a destiny. He lost a good income, but he found honor. He lost comfortable security, but he found adventure the like of which he had never dreamed. Well, why Jesus chose this Matthew, the tax collector, the last, the least, the outcast, the most likely people to be his disciples? Because they knew that they needed God's mercy. And because Jesus accepted them just as they are. So it does not matter who you are now, but it matters who we become. It matters who we become. It is Jesus' mission to make you to become. Becoming is very important in the discipleship. Nowadays, we live in a world where AI, artificial intelligence, control our lives. There is a danger there, but there is a, like a, a comfortable lifestyle. Tesla, they invented it, self-driving car. I saw my neighbors, they drove, they driving in a Tesla cars. We have a GPS, but in back in maybe 10 years later or 20 years, we didn't have a GPS. So I always look at the map when I drove to unknown area. But now I cannot drive without GPS. When God called Abraham, there was no GPS either. God called Abraham to follow God's directions. In first reading, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, God said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who calls you, I will curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
Abraham did not have a map to live behind his country, his hometown, his kindred, but he trusted the unknown. He did not know where to embark on a journey with many twists, turns, did not know the destinations yet. So how many of us would respond to God if we are Abraham's situation? We can say, hello, God, please give me a GPS so that I can follow you. <laughs> but Abraham and Sarah followed God's direction, although they did not know where to go. Abraham was not a perfect person. He failed numerous times. He made mistakes, but he kept moving forward and investing his time in praising God but what made him fathers of all nations? What made him to be blessed? You see in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, he built an altar to the Lord everywhere he go. This means he never missed the worshiping God. Everywhere he went, he built an altar that worshiped God, invoked the name of the Lord. So he became the father of all nations and was blessed and be a blessing. Because he worshiped God in every circumstances, he let God be in charge of his journey. You look at the, in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. So Oxen Hill, how many of you truly follow God's directions, even though you don't know where to go? Do you cling to God in every situation? How many of you will take your hands off the wheel of your lives and let God be the driver for you? We don't know tomorrow, but we have hope in Jesus Christ who want to bless us abundantly, although we are dealing with ups and downs in our daily lives. Today we celebrate Graduate Sunday and Young Adult Sunday. I'm so proud of their achievement. Graduation marks a major milestone in life, a time when we celebrate accomplishment and we have goals and dreams, but the transition to another phase of life. As you move into new transition, do not forget to watch God. Listen, not only believe, but become good disciples of Jesus Christ through your presence in worship. You then will be instrument of God's blessings and God's love. Dear Oxen Hill, dear graduate, God has big plan for you to prosper, not to harm you. God wants to bless you beyond your imaginations and invest your daily lives into God's hands and care. The best way you can be successful in your dreams, in your goals, follow God's way. Invest in your time in Jesus Christ by building an altar wherever you go and praising the Lord in the, all the days of your life. Through your worships, through your studies, through your prayer, through your service. No matter where you are now, it doesn't matter. It matters who you become. Rodrigo, you can become famous singers. <laughs> Juan, you can become famous drummer if you truly follow Jesus. Jose? you can become truly, truly accomplish what have your dreams. If you follow Jesus, you can be blessed and be a blessing. Amen? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> now, if you are able to rise up and sing a song, my life is in you, Lord. My life is in you. My strength is in you, Lord. My hope is in you, Lord. In you, in you. My 
life is in you, Lord, my strength is in you, Lord, my hope is in you, Lord, in you, within you. I will praise you with all of my life. I will praise you with all of my strength. This is a time of celebrations. We are so proud of the, our graduate, their achievement and their accomplishment. And we want to bless them with our love and care and support. Our sister mother, Brice Bart, will prepare the uh, pro, uh, graduation celebration. Uh, actually, promotion Sunday, we decided to do on August. Right, sister mother? Good morning. Too many years to count. This is one moment I look forward to with a lot of pride, as I love to celebrate student success. Amen. And today we are celebrating with many students in our congregation who have done extremely well. They are graduates from high school as well as college. So here we go. Our first graduate and uh, by the way if the student is not here and a, a member of the family is here you're more than welcome to come forward and receive the receive the goodies we have for them Gabriel Bisrek uh, he's a, a graduate of Oxen Hill High School science and technology program and Gabrielle decided he'll take a gap year this year because he has too many decisions to make. So let's wish him well that during this year, he will make the right decision and move forward. Is he here? Our next graduate is Nyron Campbell Adams. Nyron attended Potomac High School, where he graduated, made honor roll. He is a scholar athlete for football, and he has committed to St. Augustine's Co College, North Carolina, on a full football scholarship. Congratulations. <laughs> Nyron will be studying exercise science. This is the Amazon gift card. Yeah, would you be blessing to him? I'm so glad that he can make big achievement. 
Praise the Lord. You can stay here. Okay. Our next high school graduate is Ian Concepcion. Is he here? If not, mom, dad. Adam, you can receive it. it <laughs> <laughs> Ian is a graduate of Oxon Hill High School, the Science and Technology Adam? Program. He's accepted the University of Maryland, but chose to attend Prince George's Community College, where he will first seek the Associate Degree of Applied Sciences. His major is Electrical Engineering. There's more. Ian received an award for his STEM research product, a project, Science Fair, and STEM is for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, where he uh, designed a go-kart, and the go-kart received the most creative project, and his research project dealt with promoting renewable energy. Congratulations. So these folks are our high school graduates. Now we go on to the big wigs. Okay. Uh, community College. Our first graduate, Manuel Jojo Oralo. Jojo graduated from Prince George's Community College with his associate's degree in business administration. He's not stopping there, folks. He's moving on to the University of Maryland College Park to pursue his bachelor's degree in business administration. Our next community college graduate, Simon Fortaleza, is he here? He attended the College of Southern Maryland, earned his associate degree, and his major was information technology. Now to the college for the bachelor's degree. Our first recipient is Sydney Johnson. Sydney's not here because she's on an assignment. Okay. Sydney attended the Catholic University of America, earned her bachelor's degree. Her major was music in musical theater. Her honors and awards, honor roll, summa cum laude, In her senior year, Sydney was selected to perform at six professional theater productions in the DC metro area at the following locations. Constellation Theater, Next Stop Theater, and the Rorschach Theater. This summer, she will be in the Prince George's Shakespeare in the Parks production of Shakespeare, The Tempest. And in fall 2023, Sydney will be working with the Imagination Theater in Bethesda, Maryland. Congratulations. Woo. Our next recipient of the bachelor's degree is McKenna Dunbar. Woo. Nice seeing you again, Camilla. <laughs> McKenna attended the University of Richmond in Virginia, earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration, her honors and awards, honor roll, and she has a job, folks. She's, she's currently employed at the Sierra Club, American Environmental Organization, and is the lead for the building and electrician section. Congratulations. Okay, moving on up. Mm -hmm. Master's degree. 
Joanna Orallo. <laughs> Joanna attended the Catholic University of America, where she earned her master's degree in architecture. Her honors and awards, magna cum laude. She successfully completed, <laughs> let me read this again. She successfully completed an internship with an archi architectural engineering firm in 2022-23. And she was recently admitted to the association membership of the American Institute of Architects. That's quite an honor. <laughs> she too has a job, currently employed at Lutero Thomas LLC. And now to the doctorate. My dear daughter, Selena Bridge Bassey. George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences, yeah. yes, doctorate you. degree so in occupational you. therapy, her honors and awards, honor roll summa cum laude, <laughs> and she recently earned recognition for her publication, Archives of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, the Rehabilitation me me Measures Database, and she updated the Modified Ashworth Scale RMD Assessment Review. Those of you who are in physical therapy will know what I'm talking about. Congratulations to our young folks. They've made us proud. Let us continue to encourage them to move far further. And for the what's coming up, folks, this is your example. We want to see this repeated year after year. Okay, congratulations. As Selena's mom, I would like to thank this congregation for your prayers, your support, and your thoughts as she went through a very difficult period for the last, I'm not going to say the number of years, the last number of years. In her recovery. This is a miracle. And I thank you for your prayers and your thoughts and your support. I would also like to share with you a video clip of what happened during her pudding ceremony. Great. Doctor of Occupational Therapy. Selena Shivani Bridgebasi.
folks, that's the power of prayer. Thank you again. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sister Mara Bruce Bach. Well, we are so proud of you. And then I see the miracles from Selena's achievement, her, her resilience, and her uh, gracious presence every Sunday and helping us uh, in the tech. But now I see how God bless you. We are truly witness God's blessings and God's miracles. And thank you for showing us a good example to all of young adult and children and youth. Would you, would you give big hands? And I'm so proud of you, each of you. Let me bless you with prayers, okay? Let us pray. One moment. Sure. A young man who is not a member of this church, but his grandmother is a faithful steward and has been here doing wonderful things. His name is Ellis Hale. Barbara Hale's grand, Hale Johnson's grandson. He graduated from North Point High School in Anne Arundel County, graduated with honors, and he's the recipient of the prestigious National Meyerhoff Scholarship. Woohoo! That will take him as far as he wants to go as long as he continues to study in the STEM field. Congratulations, Grandma. Congratulations, Barbara Hill Johnson. I know you're so faithful. You showed a good example to your grand-grandchildren. So we are so proud of you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to have these young children and youth and adults for their achievement, for their accomplishment. With your blessings, we witness your miracles through this young adult, especially Sister Selena Bruce Bach. Mariga, please surround those who are graduating with your grace. Bless them with hope so that they may move into the future with eager and open heart. Help them to put the knowledge and skills inside the gain through their educations for the good of all humankind. Inspire them to believe in the goodness of life even when faced with challenges and difficulties. As they commence with their lives, may they grow even more grateful and wise and bless them and protect them wherever they go and remember your amazing grace and miracles. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen, amen. Would you give big hands one more time? I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, McKenna. <laughs> great job, great job, great job, great job, great job, great job. So you may go. Yes. Now let's hear special songs as they shine their gifts and talent. And we'd like to invite uh, Rodrigo. And um, I just want to acknowledge and recognize uh, the, um, Melanie. She's been faithful to our worship service. And then we're going to celebrate promotions on August. Sister Mother 
Uh, we're going to celebrate on August, and then please submit the information uh, promotion Sunday so that we can recognize them and encourage them with our prayers and support. Thank you, Rodrigo. As Jesus called Matthew, and Matthew followed Jesus right away, we are here to follow Jesus. Let us give ourselves to God, 
to give our tithes and offering to make a difference in our lives and community and the world. While we are giving our adult choir, we'll do the special songs. Jesus calls you, follow Jesus, and go, and wherever you go, God goes with you, with the blessing. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. It's the light of Yeah. 
Amen, amen. You truly shine God's light. Let us blessings. You can stay there. God of love and God of grace, you bring the light into our lives. What a blessings we have. We commit our life to shine. We're going to shine your light every, every moment of our lives. We follow you wherever we are. We worship you, praise you. So bless these gifts. Use these gifts to bring the light to those in, sitting in darkness. Let the church says, Amen. Amen. So now if you are able, if you want to join the adult choir, it's, and everybody can join it, not even adult and children and youth, you can come every third, uh, second Sunday and then 9, 20 a.m. to see many. And if you want to join the like Rodrigo Juan for the young adult Sunday every fourth Sunday, you can call me so that you can sing like a Rodrigo. He did a great job today. Amen? Amen. If you are able, please rise up. Let us sing together. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. ministry moment. Uh, Josie, are you ready? Uh, when she's ready, you can come. I'd like to uh, uh, announce that the Bible Museum trip on June 23rd at 8.30 a.m. we meet at the parking lot, church parking lot. We have a uh, uh, transportation. Our goal is 36 people, but now we have 42 people, so we uh, arrange the 55 passenger bus to meet at the church parking lot. So that if you, uh, you signed up, we have 42 people signed up at this moment. Uh, please submit admission ticket, $18 uh, plus tax, so that uh, we can do the Bible Museum tours in Washington DC and have a fellowship together. Um, and then if you have any questions, so please let me know. Uh, on June 23rd, on Friday, if your children, uh, Youth would you like to go young adult? Uh, I can send you permission slip to send your kids so that we have a permission from you. 
Yes. You can have a seat now. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Congratulations to you, Selena. Hats off also to you. Uh, young adults, if you still remember what Pastor said in her message today, follow the GPS of Jesus and everything will be taken care of. So for our um, mission moment, our bread ministry needs hands and feet to work during Tuesdays, right? And then um, on the bulletin, we have Sunday school in person and in Zoom uh, for kids and for adults at 9.20 in the morning. We have the VIP praise night every Sunday at 7 o'clock in the evening via Zoom. Uh, Bible study is every Wednesday via Zoom at 7 o'clock. Donna's dance resumes June 22nd. There is a minimal fee of $10, I think, for that at 1 o'clock every Thursday. Uh, we have a worship, oh, okay. The prayer vine is every Thursday at 7 o'clock. We have a coffee and connection every uh, next Sunday via Zoom. Um, if you have, everybody is um, invited to join the choir. All are welcome. And please just see Mr. Money here in front, if you are able. And um, that's all for now. And the Bible Museum 3, June 23. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Josie. Please arise and receive a blessing and benedictions. By the grace of God, we are made well. Jesus Christ invites us to follow him. Jesus Christ is our GPS. He will guide you wherever you go. So follow Jesus. Follow whatever, whatever situation you have. God will take care of you. May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord. Ruler of everything. Glory to Mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, ruler of everything, his name is higher, higher than any other name, his power is greater, he has created everything, mighty Good morning, Mickey. Good morning, Mickey. Good morning, Good Patty. morning, Vivian. How are you? I'm hanging in there. Thank you. How's Vito? <laughs> the, the, the nurse, my sisters call him the low budget oh, nurse. He's okay. doing fine. <laughs> 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 Good morning, everybody. Mickey, how's, how's Bob? How's Bob? 
this morning. Well, he's pretty good. We were running a little late this morning, so he had That's how I wanted to do it. I see but, uh, okay. Yes, God. Yeah. We need... Yeah, you 